I'm Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com and today I'm talking about the Kindle and how it's marketed so differently in different parts of the world. And it's fascinating to me because I've just moved from Australia to England and I've noticed huge differences in why people are reading ebooks, why they're buying ebook readers, and uh, I thought you'd be interested to know about it. So first of all, in Australia, where I've been living for a good few years now, the Kindle is justifiable purely on the price of books. To get a brand new book in Australia, a brand new fiction, you're talking about $30 to $40, which with the uh, US dollar right now, it's on about one to one. That is massively expensive for a, a book that you're going to read in a few hours, uh, you know, for voracious readers, and then you're going to probably never read again. So for, for fiction that you just devour, um, you know, the, the Kindle was a, a brilliant device and in fact my own reading of fiction trebled or quadrupled because of buying the Kindle and I know a lot of other people felt the same way. So there was really no other reason um, that you even needed to talk about and I recommended the Kindle all the time to readers because of the price. So then, of course, I've arrived in England and I'm <laughs> gobsmacked uh, to find that there is VAT on ebooks and not print books. So that is the uh, value added tax, or it's GST in Australia, you know, some kind of sales tax in, in America. It's on Kindle ebooks and, and other ebooks, but it's not on print books. So that immediately adds, in England, 20% to the price of an, of an ebook, um, which I'm, I just I just don't understand, you know, what, why would that be? Uh, so anyway, I'm going to probably get in, into a campaign to stop that. But uh, that's one thing. So price, definitely not. Kindle books are often more expensive than print books here in England. You can go to a Waterstones and get three books for the price of two. You can get dead cheap books in supermarkets, WH Smiths, Waterstones. So there is no competition on price. Uh, definitely print books win on price generally, except for ebook only published authors like myself, uh, where you can get Kindle books for sort of under a pound or one pound fifty, um, but print books are more expensive. So you can really tell the difference. Tr traditionally published authors can't really compete on ebook prices. And yet the Kindle is everywhere and Amazon is pushing the Kindle uh, everywhere. I haven't really seen the Nook. I have seen um, some things in, in some other bookshops. But the Kindle, uh, I go on the London Underground every day at the moment uh, to work and there's these big adverts. They're in the Sunday papers. They're now selling Kindle in Tesco, which is a bit like Walmart. Um, you know, the... the they're everywhere and the, what's interesting on the advert is that they're not selling on price they're going for something else entirely so first of all they're going for choice and uh, speed of download so it's sort of the the catchphrase is think of a book and have it within 60 seconds which is of course one of the amazing things about the kindle so i uh, often browse bookshops and then actually just buy it on the kindle straight away you know in, in my bag <laughs> uh, which is terrible they must hate that um but uh, yeah, so think of a book and download it right now, that instant gratification type of thing that people want. So if you see an advert on the train, and um, once you get back up into Wi-Fi, you can have it immediately. So that is one of the top selling points. The second one is the weight. Uh, obviously the um, the Kindle itself doesn't weigh much. I've got a cover and I've got an old style Kindle. Um, the new ones are even smaller. Um, and of course uh, in England and Europe it's very cheap to travel if you don't have much baggage and excess baggage is so expensive now. So people can go on holiday you know with their six to eight uh, paper bags like this um, and it will cost them more money. So taking a Kindle is a really good thing for weight. And also if you think about you know again people like me commuting every day you don't want to carry around big books so having the choice um, on the London Underground of all of these books that I can read for not very much weight um, and it's easy to stand there squash like this pressing my next page button um, so that's a really good thing and space is the other thing. So again, uh, people in London uh, have a lot of a lot smaller living conditions. So I've moved from a really quite a big house in Australia to a very small flat in London, and um, I got rid of all my print books, which is sad. But I don't want to have another big collection. I just don't have the space. I'll have some print books, but but really not many. So having a Kindle means that I can have thousands of books uh, on one device, one very small device. So that's quite exciting too. 
and the Kindle is taking off. People are definitely buying it here. Um, Kindle sales are going up. That's pretty exciting. Um, J.K. Rowling has just announced that she will be publishing Harry Potter ebooks, um, not just for Kindle, but all kinds of ways. Um, so basically, it's becoming more mainstream in England and Europe, um, but still lagging behind America. And it feels like it's behind Australia, but then um, you know, I just knew a lot more people with Kindles there. So I think we will see things change. Certainly the price is still prohibitive, um, but the freedom, you know, the speed, uh, the weight, the size, those things will probably win out. And also that people like to have the latest gadgets and the Kindle is still a latest gadget in England. Okay, so I thought you might be interested in um, how ebooks is a difference uh, across different countries. I'd love to know how ebooks are sold and ebook readers are sold in your country and what are the kind of barriers to entry and the way that they're selling them. Thank you, I'm Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com.